So it's been kind of a uh, hectic week of uh, kit reviews. Um, I'm not sure I've ever done quite that many kit reviews in such a short period of time. Um, especially considering I can't actually build any of them for the foreseeable future. I mean, save for stuff like the, uh, the Freedom or a couple of the Gundam kits that I've got uh, kicking around. Um, yeah, none of them are anything that I'm going to be able to actually really put any effort and time into to fully build and paint until probably next spring because basement is still not done. Um, we're basically done everything that we can do. We've got to finish the ceiling, which almost done. We could probably be done that in a day and a half. Um, then we're getting carpet installed in about 10 days. Uh, and then we got to get new windows installed. Um, neither of those are really things that uh, my girlfriend or I can do. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're hiring installers to do that. So we're finally going to be able to say goodbye to the basement um, and focus on what's going on up here. But we've got a lot to do up here, which means that, yeah, I think I said in a vlog a couple of weeks ago that the uh, shed is just a write-off for this winter. Not going to get anything done out there. Um, and even if I did, by the time it was finished, it would be too late to actually get any modeling done. Uh, so... I'm just kind of stashing everything for now and um, hoping that in six months I'll be able to get back to work um, and actually really do some real hardcore modeling like I used to because I miss doing that. Um, but that being said, one of the last big projects that I got started on before I moved to Alberta in 2012 uh, is probably the number one thing I get asked about in my comments, aside from the pronunciation of the word decal. Um, I got started building Tamiya's 32nd scale P51 Mustang. Absolutely gorgeous kit. And having to abandon it when I moved out here broke my heart. Um, you know, I was making a lot of good progress on it, um, but, you know, stuff got in the way, and I just wasn't able to focus my energy on it while I still lived there, and then having to move out here just made it impossible. So it just went into a box and sat in, uh, in the storage room at my parents' house for basically four years, uh, until they came out after I bought the house in uh, May. May? June. Yeah, back in June. Um, and they brought it and a bunch of other stuff out, and I do intend to finish it. I don't know when, but I do intend to finish it, because that is a gorgeous kit. So as long as I've still got the all of the parts, which, mm, debatable, I may be missing a few small parts here and there, but whatever. As long as I've got the overwhelming majority of it, then I'm in good shape. Um, but... It was a gorgeous kit while I was working on it, and I am eager to get to get back to work on it. And at the time, it was being considered Tamiya's finest aircraft kit that they had ever done. They've been outdone. Or I should say they've outdone themselves. story I got told is that uh, a year and a half or so later, uh, they released their... Corsair. I am so in love with the F4U Corsair. I have been in love with this aircraft since I was a kid, and I had a GoBot that turned into one of these. I can't remember his name, it was like Dive Bomb or something like that, but it had the weirdest ro uh, robot mode. Not surprising considering it was a GoBot, but the aircraft mode looked fantastic. The proportions were good. The transformation was really neat. But ever since then, I've just been in love with this aircraft. And um, I happened to find this at a hobby shop locally for just a stupid price. The Japanese retail for this thing is around 10 or 11,000 yen. Um, this is the birdcage version. Uh, I believe the initial release, but the sec subsequent release, the bubble top canopy version, I think was around 13,000 yen, uh, or uh, between, 
120 and 140 dollars for either kit release uh, in U.S. dollars. Uh, so you know, 140 to 170 Canadian. Uh, I found this in a local Edmonton hobby shop for 99.99, or about 75 bucks U.S. So about two thirds Japanese retail as an imported kit. What the hell? <laughs> My jaw nearly hit the floor. I'm like, it wouldn't have mattered if I was broke. If I had had, if I could have scrounged up the cash and foregone eating for a week, I would have walked out of here with this thing. Because who the hell knows if that would have been like a pricing error and the price would have gone up the next day or maybe it was a flash sale. I don't know. But this price was just ridiculous and I had to have it. So I bought it. And it's freaking... Oh, I'm so excited. Can you tell how excited I am? Um, I haven't even taken the shrink wrap off of this thing. I've been waiting. I haven't even opened the box. I've been waiting to do this on camera because I'm, I'm such a fan of this thing that I'm going to be, like, drooling all over the parts when we look at it. Um, so, <laughs> before I drown in my own drool, let's, uh, let's crack it open. God, just look at that box art. Just absolutely gorgeous. Um, Vought F4U-1 Corsair birdcage version has some, uh, Info about the model kit itself, 132nd aircraft series, number 24, wingspan 390 millimeters, just about 14 or about 16 inches, fuselage length 318, about 14 inches. Highly detailed static display model, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you notice here the uh, export version only, clear engine cowling parts included. This uh, is the Amer uh, North American domestic release uh, version. Um, so yeah, that's exciting. You can uh, throw on the additional uh, clear cowling if you really want to show off that uh, gorgeous radial engine. Uh, box bottom has a couple of different marking schemes, uh, sort of the lighter uh, baby blue and the uh, more traditional darker blue. Also has the uh, paint color callouts uh, for what you want to use to, uh, uh, to mark that up. Box top side has... Uh, the Pratt & Whitney Double Wasp uh, features sharp cooling fins and exquisite detail on cylinder covers. Uh, detail on the cockpit includes a display stand and standing pilot figure and uh, can be displayed with uh, wings folded um, as well as extended. Not sure if they're positionable. I would imagine not. Um, doesn't say anything about them being positionable. It just says wings can be constructed and folded or extended. So I'm assuming that they're fixed. Right off the bat, big, fat rubber tires. Those are nearly about an inch across. Uh, tiny little screwdriver, because there's a couple little screws that come with this. Um, not sure what they're for. Probably for fixing the uh, wing to the body or something. Uh, and a couple of uh, metal axle pins. Uh, really nice tread detail, though, on those tires. Look really, really great. Uh, we got our runner of optional clear parts. Uh, full upper cowling, you got your uh, vent fins in open or closed position. Um, just a ton of clear pieces. This is probably just a, a duplicate runner. Uh, from the uh, engine part, but yeah, there's nice molded in detail here on both sides. This just looks fantastic. Um, I'm guessing these are parts of the engine. Oof. Big runner. Um, wings, obviously. Um, looks like Flaps and ailerons might be, um, I'm not sure, I, I don't know actually if the aircraft has uh, fabric flaps and ailerons, but the leading edge is clearly metal because you can see rivets, and um, incredibly fine rivet detail all along that, and the uh, wing roots as, as well. Um, just tons and tons of molded in, tiny little rivet detail everywhere, um, probably partially to... Uh, 
produce a non-skid surface for the benefit of the pilot. Um, but uh, yeah, you got your uh, shell ejection ports for the six three in each wing um, M2 machine guns, and uh, some additional detail pa panels here and there. Just, ugh, just absolutely stunningly gorgeous molding on these. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say these are probably something to do with the wing fold mechanisms. This, because uh, these would probably be the uh, straight wing and then the open wing, uh, folded wings rather mechanism uh, channels. So these would fit inside uh, the wing itself. Some really neat molding on here. Uh, I really like the way they did this. So it's all a single piece. So it's structurally very, very solid but you got molding on the end of it without having to add a second uh, detail piece to the end of it. Um, and uh, alternately, uh, these would be probably the channels for the, uh, the main fuselage, while these would be probably for the wings themselves. Possibly vice versa, I'm not really sure. Um, but it looks like it's going to be a very, very structurally sound wing. No fold mechanism, clearly, but that would be fairly easily uh, fixed with a photo etch aftermarket part. But the detail inside of their, uh, inside the mechanism just looks fantastic. Some dry brushing and a couple of washes would just make that look just phenomenal. Some uh, fuselage panel parts. Uh, I'm guessing this would be the spine of the aircraft behind the pilots, behind the cockpit. Uh, maybe part of the landing gear bays. Um, this would be the front or rear bulkhead of the landing gear bay. I'm not quite sure. Looks like it has detail on both sides, so it might actually be a, uh, a center spar um, for the entire landing gear bay. Uh, but you can see it follows the curvature of the wing and uh, fuselage. But uh, same with everything. Like, I, I can't, can't get enough of Tamiya's molding. Like, they must go over these with like a really fine kind of uh, polish before, because like areas around the panel lines show a nice gloss to them, but the actual flat surfaces are very, very matte. So it's really interesting. I don't know how they do that, but it's damn neat. Um, but you can see, yeah, this little panel even has a little uh, triangle cutout shape in it, and uh, there's detail on the other side. So I don't know, maybe these are landing gear bays. Maybe you're supposed to like score these and cut them, or landing gear doors or something. Uh, if you score them and cut them so you can display them however you want, I'm not really sure. Um, but it looks really cool. <clears throat> um, finally getting into some stuff I can definitely identify. This would be the fuselage. This would be the other half of the fuselage. Whatever the hell else is on here, I have no idea. Uh, maybe some radiators. Not really certain. Um... It could be, I think there's some in-wing radiators sort of in the wing route. These kind of look like they might fit in that space. Um, but, yeah, same with everywhere else on the uh, on all the other detail parts. Just these panel details and the rivet detail on here. It's so fine! I, it's, it's, I don't even know if it's visible on camera, but like, you can kind of get the impression of it just from the way the light hits it. Like, these rivet holes are so shallow and the panel lines are so fine. Like, I was raving about the detail in some of those Hasegawa Valkyries. This puts those to shame. Uh, lower fuselage, belly and wing root strut. Uh, landing gear bays you can see here. So yeah, I'm thinking those pieces with the, all of the triangle-shaped scoring lines, whether or not you're supposed to actually cut them or not, I have no idea, but those look like they fit uh, their landing gear doors for here. Additional cutouts, probably for optional different types. Um, some venting, probably for cooling. Um, yeah, these would be the intakes for those radiators I was talking about, so air would enter through the front and pass out through the bottom uh, to uh, provide additional cooling. Uh, for the aircraft, but just, oof, I can't, I can't keep, oh, I can't believe how much I'm just raving about this rivet detail, it is just phenomenal, I cannot get over it. And uh, here we have our opaque, 
copy of that clear runner from before. Not much else I can really say about it because it's identical to the other one, but uh, now you can kind of make out some of the detail on here. Um, not much really to say. Uh, again, these are appear to be and uh, spinners actually for the propeller. Yeah, dur. That's obviously what those are. Um, but uh, yeah, looks really nice. Same exact runner we saw before. Okay, so uh, we got a lot of uh, just detail parts. Got uh, various landing gear parts. Um, not sure what, this is probably the tail gear, bulkheads, um, possibly a tow hook. I think maybe the other version comes with a little moto tug. So I think maybe this runner was just carried over from that. Even though I think this one came first. I think this hooks onto like a little... Uh, a little tractor that tows it around the aircraft carrier deck. Um, I could be mistaken, I should have done my research, but why would I do that? Because research takes effort. Um, good sturdy landing gear. That's one thing I love about the Corsair, is it has like good big fat sturdy landing gear. That's actually part of the reason for the gull wings. In fact, that's the main reason for the gull wings. They had the big double uh, wasp radial engine. The big, huge engine needed a big, huge propeller to run it, to, 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 for it to power. So it needed a lot of clearance. But because it's a carrier-based aircraft, it needed short, sturdy landing gear. So, solution, rather than having a straight wing, they bent the wing so that the landing gear bays are closer to the ground. And a, pr a practical solution to a... Uh, to a problem ended up creating one of the most gorgeous aircraft silhouettes of all time. And of course we got uh, separate flaps and ailerons and uh, these uh, flaps for the wings are very clearly um, on the aircraft are very clearly metal uh, because there's rivet detail on them whereas on the uh, ailerons on the tail, uh, they appear to be fabric because um, there's a very slight texture to them, and um, you can see the ribbing. Um, likewise, possibly with these, they have a uh, a metal base, and then the fabric extends from them. Um, not a lot else to say. There's just a lot of uh, a lot of neat detail on here, but don't really know what most of it is. Um, Okay, we got a pair of identical runners here, so we'll just look at one. Uh, we got the horizontal stabilizers and uh, ailerons. We got our propeller blades, so you get a spare. Um, wheel hubs, um, big, nice-looking rims, and uh, metal uh, or in interior rims. Looks like there's uh, room in there for a poly cap, so you can actually adjust the wheels as you like. Um, Aileron, same as uh, on the other parts of the aircraft, appear to be made of fabric. Um, just look really nice. Uh, probably, I don't know, these probably go somewhere under the hood, in, in the engine someplace, I'm not really sure. They look like maybe some uh, air ducting, uh, directing air where it needs to go inside the engine. Oh boy, now we're getting into the fun stuff. Engine parts. This big, fat, double wasp radial engine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Eighteen cylinders on this freaking engine. God damn. Um, just a staggering amount of power under the hood of this thing. Just, oh my god, such a gorgeous, loud, powerful aircraft. And got some, uh, some plumbing parts. You got your part of your exhaust which probably just feeds into the fuselage of the aircraft and uh, disappears behind panels. Um, looks like an exhaust manifold or possibly an intake manifold, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm not sure what these are either. They all they appear to attach to each of the cylinders. Possibly um, some sort of um, electrical system. Um, not sure. The uh, hub for the spinner and the uh, drive shaft 
actually has molded uh, teeth on it. So it really can grab the prop um, very realistically. Uh, looks great. This this engine, I mean, this engine is practically a model in itself. I mean, I, I'd be very excited to just buy this and build it as it is. <clears throat> and we got our glass. Uh, canopy, uh, windscreen, which has a not insignificant amount of bulkhead and fuselage actually molded to it. So, yeah, it'll be easy to attach, not have to worry too much about uh, uh, paint fog or glue fogging the, uh, the glass, which is always a worry. Um, got a little bubble top in the top there. Not really sure. I guess that's probably to accommodate the pilot's head if he happens to be a tall pilot. Um, armored glass uh, for the uh, windscreen. I'm guessing a belly window. Uh, maybe for bombing runs, so you can look down quickly at a glance between your feet and see if you're in position. Rear windows, maybe, uh, behind the pilot. And uh, instrument panel. Um, if I remember correctly from the P-51, you take the instrument panel decal and apply it to the back of this. And then from the front, you insert it through the uh, instrument panel uh, part. And then you can see all the little instruments through the glass, and it looks very realistic. Uh, also, you got your gun sight and more gun sight parts, and uh, a lot of other clear lenses. Some of them very, very tiny, like really tiny, like less than a millimeter across. Uh, speaking of the instrument panel, uh, there it is. So yeah, that uh, clear part would insert from behind and uh, you'd be able to see all of the uh, dials and gauges uh, through each of the little openings. Um, might be an alternate spine for the rear of the aircraft uh, behind the pilot seat. Possibly for, there might be two different uh, possible builds within this kit, or this one might have come from uh, the early version, while the other one might have been a piece for the later version, the bubble top version, I'm not sure. Um, Framing, bulkhead framing for uh, the cockpit, these would, I think, be the rudder pedals. Um, so that's neat, they're actually on separate linkages, and look, little flimsy. These rods are not very, very stiff, uh, solid, so, yeah, do be cautious, because, yeah, this extra bit of runner attaches the part to itself, so, yeah. Uh, you got your throttle controls and various other um, in-cockpit controls. Um, not much else in the way of cockpit parts just yet. Oh, you got your tail hook. That's cool. Uh, standing and seated pilot figures. Uh, so you got options to build both uh, as a complete figure. Um, the seated pilot has a hollow back. Uh, so yeah, you get a separate piece here, which includes the uh, parachute slash seat cushion. Got your left and right arms, head, uh, pilot's breathing hose, standing pilot, uh, just in flight jumpsuit with flak jacket, uh, head, left and right arms. Look like he's uh, got his arms uh, uh, kind of hanging from his belt, or kind of hands on his uh, belt kind of pose. Ah, the rest of the cockpit parts. Uh, probably the rear bulkhead, maybe the front bulkhead, side instrument panels. Lots of buttons and switches on there. That looks really great. Um, like you can actually make out like toggle switches on there. That's really cool. Uh, very simple pilot seat. Uh, more controls, more controls. Um, oxygen bottle. More controls, more controls, uh, ducting and hoses, more bottles. I'm going to be honest, that kind of looks like a revolver. I'm not sure. It might be a flare gun. Actually, yeah, that's probably a flare gun mounted to uh, the bulkhead. Um, a lot of other side panel detail here and there. Another, it looks like another side instrument panel. So that's cool. Um... And last up for plastic parts, we got our in-flight display stand. Just a very basic A-frame uh, strut. Uh, got a space for a name plaque. 
looks like it uh, can screw into the model. That's probably what that screw was that I was looking at before and wondering about. Um, so yeah, you can display the model with uh, landing gear up, landing gear down, in flight, landed, folded wings, closed wings. The really funny thing to do would be uh, display it in flight with one wing folded, one wing extended, and the landing gear retracted, because that'd be funny. <laughs> Photo Etch. Two different runners of Photo Etch parts. Uh, we'll start with this one. Uh, we got seat belts, uh, other straps. We got some look like detail parts for maybe inside the landing gear bays. Probably some antennas, like some like blade antennas for on the body. Um, knobs maybe for the controls. Hard to say. Um, I'm no expert when it comes to Photo Etch. I'm no expert when it comes to uh, World War II era aircraft. Um, but the uh, detail looks great. You can see there's a difference in the texture between the fabric belt and the metal buckles. Always love the way they do that. Never, no, no idea how, but it looks damn cool. Uh, second photo etch part has uh, just grills and intakes. Um, probably engine parts. Um, not quite as impressive, but uh, looking, looking very cool nonetheless. Uh, marking sheets. A um, lot of Air Force roundels. A uh, couple of pilot custom uh, names. Daphne C. Um, Jolly Rogers. Gotta love it. Gonna keep up my, uh, my Jolly Rogers logo. Um, Skull Squadron. Yeah. Valkyries forever. Uh, Spirit of 76. Couple of, yeah, a couple different marking schemes. Uh, nothing too fancy on here. Um, next sheet has some of the more elaborate printing. Uh, remove tape before firing. I guess those probably go on the machine guns. A lot of uh, remove before flight and uh, warning labels and markings and whatever. That uh, instrument panels. That's actually kind of weird. They're just printed in black. That's really odd. I wonder maybe if they're like, if you backlight them a little bit, will they be a little more visible? I'm not sure. But uh, you got your kill markings, various other warnings and labels and whatnot all over the place. Uh, printing is so tiny, I can't even come close to making any of it out. Maybe you can. But the printing fidelity is phenomenal. Can you read that? Danger. Do not work on... Do not walk on wing butt. That's about three millimeters across. And that printing is perfectly legible if you have a goddamn microscope. Uh, we've also got a set of uh, masking uh, seals for the uh, canopy. I don't think any of these are pre-cut but you can follow the lines and uh, use that as a referent for, uh, for masking. As well, you got uh, the aircraft name for the display stand. And a lot of literature. We're going to start with this one. This is, uh, looks like kind of a biographical history of the aircraft, starting with the original prototypes through to the production models. F4U-1A with semi-bubble canopy clashed with Japanese forces in the Solomon Islands. Um, the bulk of it is printed in Japanese, which is a huge bummer. I can't read any of it. But um, you get uh, a lot of history, a lot of different... Uh, you get your, your initial prototype up through the uh, final production variant, uh, which is made for the uh, French Navy. Um, uh, identification markings, uh, you know, calling out what parts are what, bubble canopy, burge cage canopy, antenna mast, rocket mount, exhaust pipes, etc., etc. Uh, marks where everything goes. 12.7 millimeter machine gun, because this is a Japanese model kit, it uses uh, metric. Uh, this would be a 50 cal, 12.7 millimeter being half an inch. Um, 
photos of the different uh, history of the aircraft. Ooh, rotation and retraction of shows how the landing gear retracts. I actually thought that it would. Uh, I guess it makes sense for it to kind of fold up and rotate because yeah, the wings are quite uh, quite thin. Um, and uh, more reference photos in uh, mostly black and white, but a few color photos of uh, surviving examples of the aircraft. Um, there's still quite a few of these kicking around. Go to any uh, reputable aviation museum and you're likely to find one somewhere. I've seen probably three or four uh, over the course of my lifetime. Uh, probably the one that stood out to me the most was at the Palm Springs Aviation Museum. I actually got to touch it. Um, but, uh, yeah, machine gun bays, um, just, oof, it's an absolutely gorgeous aircraft. Painting guide, too big to fit in the instruction book. Well, because the instruction book is actually printed in black and white, and I wanted this to be in color. Um, calls out your uh, different colors that you want to use if you're going to do it in this color scheme. Um, so you got your uh, light ghost gray kind of uh, belly, you've got your lighter blue wings and uh, flanks of the aircraft and then the top. Almost perfectly from the top is uh, the darker blue. So yeah, camouflage from the top because it would commonly be flying over the ocean and uh, camouflage from the bottom because you'd be flying through the sky, you'd be looking up at it and you'd want it to be kind of masked by uh, cloud and uh, the blue sky. U.S. Navy VF-17 USS Bunker Hill 1943. So, because of the Jolly Roger, this is probably the uh, model that I'm going to do. Because, of course, Skull Squadron represent. And finally, our big, fat instruction book. This book is huge. Um, same art as uh, on the box cover. Starts with some... Historical information about the uh, aircraft, this time in English, as well as uh, German uh, and Japanese. Um, uh, also in French, and um, I believe that would be it. So yeah, French, English, German, and, uh, and uh, Japanese. I uh, got our paint callouts. That's a lot of different paints. That's a lot of paint. Um... You got your, uh, it, you'd want to choose which marking option you are going to build early on so that you can decide which variant uh, you're going to do because there might be different color or different uh, parts to be applied at different st stages of the construction depending on which version you're going to do. Uh, construction, as is common with aircraft, starts with the uh, cockpit. Um, this is what I said about the in instrument panel. So it looks here like the instruments are actually visible through, uh, so yeah, maybe they're, they're printed actually on the back side of the decal sheet, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, you're supposed to be able to see them through the instrument panel. And I actually got that far on my P-51. And hot damn, did that look pretty cool. If you get them lined up correctly, it looks friggin' great. Uh, photo etch seat belts, um, and, uh, assembly of the pilot seat. Uh, painting of the pilot and attachment to his uh, his seat and the bulkhead. Yeah, you've got your uh, little rear view windows. Um, looks like there's different glass for if you're going to display the canopy open or closed. So that's interesting. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you'll have to choose which version you're going to do if you're going to display it open or closed if you want to use uh, which glass you want to use because technically neither is correct for the other version. I'm, I'm assuming if you use the closed, then you're not actually going to be able to slide the canopy back. So these are probably just thinner and maybe got a slightly different shape to them. Um, actually, no. See, these ones don't have the frame on the front. There you go. That's the difference. These have no visible frame on the front because they would be covered up by the frame of the canopy, whereas these ones have the visible frame because you'd be able to see them through the glass. So, yeah, this is what I figure out as I'm in the process of doing what I'm doing. Uh, rear bulkhead, here's that triangular A-frame structure that I thought might have been for a tug. I guess it's for the, uh, it's a linkage for the tail section, so 
Yeah, these probably hook up to the uh, rudder pedals and this to the flight stick to control the ailerons and uh, rudder. Yeah. A lot of stuff going on inside that cockpit. A lot of stuff going on in the fuselage. Um, assembly of the fuselage, you'll have to sandwich together your uh, completed cockpit, uh, rear linkage, all the different armor panels, and this is probably just a uh, support spar. It's getting on to the engine. You do the exhaust manifold, which uh, feeds out of uh, exhaust vents somewhere down here. Um, engine cowling. Um, you'd have to decide which version you're going to do, because there's a version with an extended cowling and one with one that's flush. You'd have to uh, select which version uh, based on uh, which marking scheme you're going to do. Uh, likewise with uh, the upper spinal armor panel, which yes, uh, one is for one version, one is for the other version. If you're going to do the A version, you have to drill out a little hole, I guess, to attach a uh, lens of some kind to. Uh, assembly of the engine. God damn. Um, yeah. I'm excited to build this just for the freaking engine. Uh, you got your intake manifold parts, you got your actual overall cylinders. 18 freaking cylinders, Jesus Christ. There's no kill like overkill. Uh, attachment of the intake manifold to the first bank of cylinders, attachment of the first bank of cylinders to the second bank of cylinders. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that these are electrical uh, systems, probably for the spark plug to control. They'll probably go from the distributor to uh, control the spark. Uh, and yeah, these look like they fit over the top, so they probably vent air through over and around the cylinders to uh, help with cooling. Uh, front cowling attachment looks like it fits over the engine uh, pretty permanently. Uh, here's where you'd want to choose if you're going to display with open or closed cowl flaps. Uh, closed looks like you can insert the engine into the fuselage first, but if you're going to display them open, you're going to want to attach them before you attach the engine. Uh, horizontal stabilizers, elevators, uh, rudders, flaps, ailerons, etc. Rear tail, essentially. Um, rear landing gear, which looks like it might be articulated. Um, hard to say, but, uh, there's an option for a folded, slight, a partially folded mechanism, um, with a slightly deployed wheel for, uh, I'm guessing for belly landings. Um, but yeah, you can also see the tail hook. Uh, and we're getting to the wings. This is where you would choose if you're going to display in, ex with extended or, uh, closed wings. So you start with the uh, belly wing root. Um, you got all of your intake and vents and whatnot. This would be right here. This nut uh, would be where the uh, the base, the display stand, would attach. So if you're going to use the display stand, you would have to drill out a hole in the bottom of the uh, fuselage. If not, then you would just leave it as is. If you're doing wings extended, then yeah, these would be the wing struts that fit inside the upper wings and attach to uh, this spar uh, that runs across the bottom of the aircraft. So it's the main beam, essentially. It's the structural support for the entire wing assembly. Um, flaps up or flaps down. Looks like they can be posed up or down, but you, they're not adjustable. So you choose if you're going to display them up or down, and then you attach them in place. And there's no, uh, no posing them afterwards. Um, yeah, there is so much going on in this thing. I'm going to start skimming through this because otherwise this video is going to be 10 hours long. Um, continuing the uh, wing assembly, you got your wing, uh, fl uh, ail flaps, uh, attachment of the flaps to the main body, which uh, the wing is attached to, the lower wing is attached to the main body. We're not even on to the wing extensions yet. Um, here's where you'd get to, this is the rear view mirror for the uh, windscreen. Finally getting on to the wing extensions, so wing insert uh, beam support, um, ailerons, 
Uh, detail parts added to the inside of the wing should you choose to display it extended if you uh, or in uh, collapsed uh, retracted form whatever if you're going to display it extended you can probably leave most of the stuff in here off <sighs> more and more and more and more wing stuff we're barely halfway through this book um, and uh, this is pretty much final assembly with folded wings or extended wings with folded wings then you'd go back to that last section and basically do the model completely differently from the ground up. So yeah, there's really no option for uh, switching one to the other uh, after assembly. And then, yeah, after the wings are done, then you'd paint your pilot figure, assemble your display stand. If you're going to attach it to the aircraft, use your sticker if you're going to. And then finally, you got your parts uh, call-outs, which got a page and a half of them. So that's quite a bit. And then uh, guide for all your different stencils. Uh, for you know, uh, And then finally your markings uh, for all the different color schemes that you can choose to do. So that is a goddamn huge model kit. I apologize for rushing through the last couple minutes of the uh, instruction manual, but really it's all pretty much the same. Uh, the wings... There's not a lot of difference from the uh, from the folded to the open uh, in terms of assembly. It's really just that main spar. There's some slightly different uh, assembly of pieces here and there. Uh, there's a couple of hooks that go from the wing tips to the fuselage to hold the wings in place. It was very much um, the same story over again. And well. To be perfectly honest, my memory card was actually running out of, out of storage space. Um, so yeah, I kind of had to uh, finish up uh, sooner rather than later. Um, but, Jesus. the uh, Yeah, I, I was flabbergasted by the detail on the P-51 when I bought it nearly five years ago. And um, I, I thought to myself, if Tamiya did another kit half as good as that, they would have something really special. And it looks like they've completely outdone themselves. Um, you know, the engine on the P-51 was missing a lot, of, a lot of plumbing, a lot of wiring, a lot of details here and there. It looked great, um, but, you know, it didn't have the magnetos. It didn't have a lot of the, uh, the, pl the wiring, the uh, cables and hoses running to the engine. And it looks like this kit has most of its uh, plumbing. And what it's missing shouldn't be too hard to add. Um, you know, get some really fine wire and you should be able to add pretty much all of the, uh, the necessary wiring you could possibly need. Um, but, yeah, for an out-of-the-box kit, I, wow, uh, I can't get over the, the, the technology uh, of model kits nowadays, you know. Looking back at, uh, at stuff from 20 years ago, when I was a little kid, or I guess I was a teenager at the time. You know, compare this to the Batmobile, which, granted, even back then was a pretty simple kit. Um, there's... this is just... It, the difference is just night and day. Um, you know, I mean... That kit was fine for its era. It was a cheap, inexpensive kit. But, you know, to compare apples to apples, I've built a couple of uh, Tamiya kits of aircraft and armor from that era, from, like, the late 80s, early 90s. And, yeah, they were great. Molding detail was great. Parts fit was really good. But this... This is... This is mind-boggling. Um, their engineers, man, whoever designs their model kits, I mean, give this guy a medal, give this guy a prize of some kind, I mean, whoever it is, whoever their team is, like, they're just, they've gone above and beyond. Um, I can't get over, uh, how just phenomenal this thing is. And I kind of hate myself for buying it when I did, because it's just going to be sitting on a shelf for months. But... Considering that I got it for the price that I did, I couldn't really turn it down. So, you know, kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. So, 
But you know, hey, I've got a pretty sizable stash of kits sitting in my closet right now. I'm looking at uh, seven of them as we speak. Uh, a couple of Star Trek kits, a couple of aircraft kits, including my P-51. Uh, a couple cars. That's not even including the stuff that I reviewed over the last couple of weeks. The two, uh, the two Gundams, the Macross stuff, the Batmobile, etc. Those are all over there. I'm looking at the stuff in my closet. That's all stuff that came from Victoria. Um, so, yeah, I've got enough stuff to keep me busy for a good long time. So, yeah, that's... I'm really stoked about that. Uh, once I finally get my shed built, um, have a workspace, I've got all the time in the world. I, I only work till 1 p.m. and I, uh, I've, I've got all afternoon. So that's lots of time. I can uh, sit in my shed, listen to music, watch a movie, uh, and uh, work on a kit. So, yeah. I just really hope that uh, this all works out. Um, renovations and all, and getting the shed built, and blah blah blah. It's just, it's been a stress on my mind. I'll just be happy when, uh, when the construction downstairs is finished. So, that's all for now. This is the last kit I'll be reviewing probably for a while, unless I go crazy again and do a mass, uh, I don't know, orgus buy of kits from Hobby Link Japan again, you know, see something on sale that looks cool and just buy ten of them all at once like an idiot like I am. But I don't see that happening because I've pretty much bought everything that is of interest to me over the next little while. Um, and also I'm running out of space because I don't have a big closet. Actually, I have a pretty big closet, but it's already full of crap. So, I'm going to cut it off here before I uh, ramble and ruin my voice. Um, so thank you everyone out there for watching, and uh, happy modeling.